Experts are also investigating a link between these so-called forever chemicals and COVID. So could your grease-resistant fast food wrapper or nonstick frying pan impact your COVID symptoms or even your vaccine? CBS 13 investigative reporter Julie Watts is getting answers. Yeah, emerging research indicates the so-called forever chemicals in our body may lead to more severe COVID symptoms and may reduce the effectiveness of vaccines. But now, for the first time, the general public can test for these chemicals in their own bodies at home. They're in everything from frying pans to fast food wrappers and raincoats, nonstick and waterproofing so-called forever chemicals known as PFAS. They build up in our bodies, they build up in the environment, and they also build up in water and, and wildlife. Tasha Stoiber, a senior scientist at the Environmental Working Group, explains decades of research link these chemicals to a variety of health concerns, ranging from cancers and kidney disease to asthma and weight gain. And emerging research indicates they may have an impact on COVID, too. Studies have shown that PFAS chemicals are immune toxic to humans. A recent study linked higher levels of PFAS in the body to more severe COVID symptoms. And studies linking the forever chemicals to reduced vaccine efficacy date back a decade. And we have seen this in studies in both children and adults. It's believed nearly everyone has some level of PFAS in their body, but unless you're part of a study, it's been nearly impossible to test your own levels until now. So this is the lab where the test was developed? Correct. We are the support lab for Empower DX. Empower DX has developed an at-home PFAS test that allows you to identify the levels of forever chemicals in your body with a mail order finger stick test. This is the first test that's available to the general public. Laboratory technical director Andrew Patterson explains their test was originally developed for studies on firefighters. The finger prick allowed them to easily test their PFAS levels before and after fighting a fire with PFAS laden foam. But they've now expanded access to the general public, helping people identify their levels of exposure at home. So we decided to put the test to the test. Empower DX gave us the tests at a significant discount. They normally run around $400. We tested both my blood and my daughter's. Since the chemicals build up in the body over time, we expected my levels might be higher since I'm older. To our surprise, while I did have higher levels than my daughter of one type of PFAS chemical linked to stain-resistant products, my daughter tested positive for another chemical that I did not. So most people are exposed to a complex cocktail of PFAS. It's not just one chemical that you're exposed to. But the forever chemical she tested positive for, linked to nonstick cookware, was supposed to have been phased out before she was born. This points to the overall issue with this class of chemicals. Stoiber notes they're called forever chemicals for a reason. My daughter may have been exposed through lingering chemicals in the water supply or other contamination. And because kids have less body mass, they can have higher levels. Now, it's important to note these tests are not diagnostic, and your levels don't directly correlate to the risk of any disease. But you can compare your levels to the national average and your before and after results when trying to reduce exposure. Most people are exposed to PFAS through drinking water and food. She notes you can check the levels in your drinking water through the EWG tap water database. And you can try to reduce your overall exposure by filtering your water and cutting down on takeout and coated food containers. But while there are steps you can take to reduce exposure, right now there's really no way to eliminate it. What's needed in general is stronger regulations. Now, overall, my levels and my daughter's were much lower than the national average. California has been a leader in reducing exposure, with recent laws restricting the chemicals in firefighting foam, cosmetics, children's products, and food packaging, though most of those laws don't take effect right away. Interesting report, Julie. Thank you. And for resources on how you may have been exposed to those so-called toxic forever chemicals, head to cbs13.com slash PFAS.